Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Brutal Execution of the Carthusian Monks The reign of Henry VIII has gone down in history as being full of fear and executions. Individuals were executed for many number of reasons, and their end was ultimately met with a sharp axe, a noose, a burning stake, or sometimes much worse. Henry has been remembered in history, mostly for his six wives, two of which were executed at his behest, as well as his splitting from the Catholic Church, creating essentially a war of religion that struck fear and worry into the hearts of the English people. Today's video is aimed at the monks who paid the ultimate price, their refusal to accept Henry as the supreme head of the Church of England. So please join us today as we delve into their story and their ultimate brutal execution at the behest of a ruthless king. It was during 1535 and 1540 that a total of 18 Carthusian monks were executed by Henry. Each man had refused to accept the king's supremacy. You see, Carthusian monks, or Carthusians, are an enclosed religious Catholic order that consisted of both monks and nuns, and before the Reformation, there were ten monasteries, with the first founded by Henry II in 1181. These monasteries would have usually consisted of small communities of solitary individuals who had a life focused on contemplation and silence. These devoted individuals had a strong bond with their Catholic faith, and each monk had their own living quarters, albeit small. Their lives were devoted to prayer, and their lives would have been quiet and tranquil, with more devotion to religious contemplation and their studies. Today there are still a number of Carthusian monasteries in the world, but during the Reformation, the monarchy sought about attacking these monastic buildings, and the way of life of the monks. There's a document that regards the Charter House monks, and in this it reads how 18 of the Charter House were condemned for defending the liberty of the church. Each man died in a brutal way, all for their refusal to accept Henry as the head of the church, and it came at a point in time that created a dispute for many Catholics in England, as for centuries individuals had believed in the papal supremacy and regarded the Pope as the head of the church. When Henry named himself the new head of the Church of England, chaos spun. All of these 18 men were men of God and were known for their tranquil and peaceful solitude and worship, and their executions were a huge sign of the king's brutality. The first of these brutal executions took place on the 4th of May 1535, John Houghton, the prior of the London Charter House, Robert Lawrence, prior of the Beauvale Charter House, and Augustine Webster, the prior of the Oxholm Charter House, were all executed, along with another monk of Sion Abbey, Richard Reynolds. You see, the Carthusians were ordered to make the new oath that accepted the king's supremacy, and these particular individuals pleaded with Thomas Cromwell to be exempt, only to be thrown into prison. A special commission was then brought in to try the monks and all were sentenced to death. You would have thought that it could not have gotten any worse for these poor men, but actually it did. The monks were hung, drawn and quartered. The three priors were dragged from their cells, in their robes and monk habits and taken to their execution on hurdles. Thomas More, who was imprisoned in the Tower of London, saw this from his cell. John Houghton was the first to be executed, and after he was hanged, he was taken down alive, and then the process of quartering him began. After this, his body was chopped up and was hung in different parts of London to act as a reminder of the King's power. It was then, just one month later, on June 19th, 1535, that a number of other members of the Charter suffered the same fate. Sebastian Newgate, William Exmew and Humphrey Middlemore were all hung, drawn and quartered at Tyburn. Sebastian himself was close to the King and acted as a former Privy Councillor. He did sign the Oath of Succession, but would not accept his friend's supremacy. Because of this, he was arrested and taken to Marshalsea Prison, 
and was brutally held in chains in an upright position, secured to a pillar for two weeks. This attempt to break him failed as he continued to refuse, and even the king went there to try and make him accept, but he continued to refuse, and for this he was executed. All of the three monks, killed on the 19th of June, 1535, were taken to Tyburn on hurdles, and suffered exactly the same fate as the earlier members of the house. Two years later, in the May of 1537, Henry VIII would once again cast his shadow on the order. John Rochester and James Walworth from the London Charter House were hanged in chains from the battlements of York. Both men had been opposed to the King's changes, and because of this, they were taken to York where they stood on trial for charges of treason. Both were condemned to death and were then hung in chains from the city walls. It's believed that after a while, their bodies fell to pieces and the statement of their bodies made was a direct opposition to the pilgrimage of grace, and it was an attempt to bring the city into line. This particular year would be one that proved especially brutal for the monks of the Carthusian order. There were more executions and deaths that took place that year, and in the June, the lay brother William Greenwood would meet his end. It would be within the walls of Newgate Prison, where he would die from starvation. He had been held in brutal conditions and starved in an attempt to get him to conform to the wishes of the king. Greenwood wouldn't be the only monk to die in this manner. John Davy, a deacon as well as another monk, and a man by the name of Robert Salt were these unfortunate souls. Within four days, three of the Carthusian monks had died from starvation due to being kept in the barbaric and horrific conditions of the prison. Then, on the 10th of June, more lives would be taken. Through being starved within the walls of Newgate, Wit Thomas Green and Walter Pearson died in captivity. This continued as Thomas Screven and Thomas Rednick both met the same fate in June of 1537, and in the August, Richard Beer, a choir monk, died in the same vein as Thomas Johnson. You see, Johnson had been arrested for refusing to sign the oath and was kept in Newgate for a long time. It's believed he only survived for so long as he could have been having food smuggled into him. There would be one more member of the London Charter House who was executed on the orders of Henry VIII, William Horne. He was taken to Tyburn and suffered the same fate as the earlier monks being hung, drawn and quartered in front of a large crowd but for some reason he had been kept alive, but was executed with a number of other Catholics that day. The Carthusian martyrs suffered greatly at the hands of a king. Their monastery had been completely emptied, and after its dissolution, the monistic building was used as a mansion. Before Henry, the charter had been held in high regard, but their refusal to support the king's supremacy was seen as a direct opposition to him and the crown and King Henry VIII felt they needed to be brought into line. The story of these monks shows how savage King Henry could be, and how he would stop at nothing to secure his place at the top in the seat of power. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.